When we moved to the fifth generation of video game consoles, 3D games were here to stay. They may have looked a bit ugly at the time, and they don't really hold up well today. But if you're a fan of a console such as a PlayStation or a Nintendo 64, a Sega Saturn, or even 3D games for PC in the mid-90s, when you go back to play those games, do you use the original hardware or do you just emulate it? And the reason I ask about emulation for these particular consoles is it's 3D, so how accurate does it need to be to the original console? Should it be a one-to-one -one representation of what these consoles gave you on a CRT back then? Or should you elect to start upping your resolution or adding fancier textures or patching games in all kinds of ways to make them look better than they did in the 90s? Maybe some of you want to stick with the original hardware, and I get that. It's a lot simpler. But if you open the emulation door, how far down the rabbit hole do you tumble? It is worth doing a deep dive technical video that covers various aspects of how older consoles handled 3D rendering or lacked various modern techniques when it came to 3D games, and I will most likely hit that point in the future. However, this is a gamer questions video for how you guys like to play these old 3D games in the modern era. How many different flavors of Mario 64 are there now thanks to emulation? I have no idea. The last time I played the game, I was using original hardware. But the fact there are changes such as 60 frames per second patches and texture updates in addition to the ability to alter the rendering resolution is wonderful. Maybe I won't actively sink time into simply playing Mario 64 with these enhancements via an emulator, but that doesn't mean they aren't fun to see. Let's chew on a few more examples. Chrono Cross made an appearance in the PlayStation dithering video. It certainly uses dithering, and you have the option to disable it should you desire to do so. However, you could also emulate and tweak the OpenGL render settings in your emulator to kick up the resolution, add texture filtering, and even add pixel shaders. This example is running at a much higher resolution. The dithering is gone. The polygon count is still low, but it is significantly cleaner. Is it better? Is it distracting? Is it worth making additional tweaks to tighten up the high resolution rendering, or are things better left to a low resolution and as close to the original PlayStation as possible? Are you willing to sacrifice frame rate consistency in favor of resolution or texture quality? Beyond simply running a game in a higher resolution and using more modern rendering techniques, there is also the possibility of replacing textures. Another such game that has seen dedication to this endeavor is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Several texture packs are available for the game. Now, in addition to rendering polygons at a higher resolution, the textures mapped to those polygons have a higher resolution. The fonts look sharp, and only the pre-rendered backgrounds look a bit blurry. Just like Super Mario 64, there are many different settings to tweak and texture packs to use. They can definitely enhance the experience of the game, especially on a big screen. Finally, the game I believe that has been tweaked the most is Final Fantasy VII for PC. As far as I know, fan modifications for Final Fantasy VII have been around almost since the game's original release. I suppose it might be considered cheating for me to mention the PC version as it isn't the PlayStation 1 version, but the fan work on this game is insane. Beyond simply rendering in a higher resolution and updating textures, modifications for this game include updating character models, both in the battles and in the field, upscaling field graphics, updating game objects, replacing music, tweaking the game's difficulty, and more. And there are many different releases depending on which things you would like to change. There are even those that are modeling and re-rendering the pre-rendered backgrounds. This not only takes dedication and attention to detail from modeling, but also a lot of CPU time for the rendering process. What is your take? I would like to cover some technical aspects of the PlayStation and N64 at some point in the future, but I would also like to hear from you. Does your fifth generation gaming begin and end with real hardware, or are you tumbling down the emulation rabbit hole? Let me know in the comments. Tell me if there are specific games that you feel look best when emulated. And if you don't want to mess with emulation and prefer original hardware, or believe that things should stay as close to the original as possible when emulated, leave a comment as well. Talk to you guys again soon.